Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex, and this is the Rambo, and we go until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, out to uh, Las Vegas we go, and the lovely and attractive, there he is, Stephen Pearl. Hello. Hello, my fans and friends. How, How are you? Good. Keep How are you? Those threatening letters coming in. We love them all. Jeannie and I read them every night. We embroidered <laughs> your names on our pillow so we can sleep with you all every night. That's very <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, just sitting here doing nothing. Yeah, you know something? It's funny because I, I call you like you guys up to go, oh, what's new in your life? There's nothing new in our lives. I'm 65. What's the point? I'm, I'm alive. That's what's new in my hey, life. Hey, by I'm the way, it. you're 65, so did, did you get your shot yet? Uh, what's that? Did you get your shot yet? Nah, not yet. It'll come to me. What do you mean? It'll when come? the Lord wants me to get my shot, I will get my well, shot. When you're 65, the get the goddamn shot. I'll get the shot. Well, Bang, you, you, there, you know what? Shot. You know what? I I still have my my second shot to do, which is coming Maybe late. Part two now. Which is coming later than it should have, but it, it's coming anyway. But as soon as I get that second shot, I'm going to feel a certain liberation. Not that I'm going to get reckless. You got to do this. You got to do that. Well, yeah, so. but I'm not going to get reckless. But on the other hand, I'm not going to be as fearful of going outside, coming in contact with people, things like that. You know. Yeah. So. They're going to put a chip in you, and they're going to know where you are uh-huh. at all times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. if they put a chip in me, you know what they're going to see? A guy laying on his bed scratching his ass. So yeah. put the chip in yeah. me. What do I get? Yeah. So anyway, uh, get away from that uh, that uh, uh, window. Turn turn your camera away from the window, because what it does is oh, it, it, it then brings the, you know, the uh, stuff down. See, he's having to hold his phone because... What do you, what do you, what? Oh, there's the, oh, there's the kitty. Which one is that? That's uh, Woody Muddy Waters? Yeah. He's keeping me company. I'm getting to know your cats. See, sad, isn't it? That's, a, that's how pathetic my life has become. I've gotten that's to sad. know his that's cats. Real that's horrible. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, but uh, usually I would call and say, what are you doing? And then you would say, I did a gig here and I did a gig there and I did this and I did that. And even I would have more to talk about. Uh, you know, I'd say, hey, I went down to Italy and bought some ravioli today. But we, yeah. there's none of that. You know, it's just this dull. We are living Groundhog Day. Exactly. Same thing. I did do a set Saturday night. It was fun. But then ever since then, I've been home. I've been home. I've been home. I've been home. What did you do Saturday night? I went to a place called, was it Jokes? No, Delirious Club. One of my good friend, Don Barnhart. Mm-hmm. Very uh, good guy and a good, great comedian. Mm-hmm. And I just went there to hang out. I said, you want to go on on the third show? I said, yeah, sure. So I did a guest that I haven't been on stage in a month. And I totally kicked ass. I, I, I turned on the old Nixon char when they bought it. How, and, uh, how, how did that feel? Doing, I mean, oh, great. Oh, here great. you oh, are. You, you know, you're, as a comedian, you're used to doing three nights a week. Right, in the old days, yeah. <laughs> How w- now? When was the last time before last Saturday that you did comedy on stage? Uh, New Year's Eve, I believe. Okay, so that's a long time for a comedian. Sure. All right. Yep. How did it feel? Were you rusty? I thought I would be, but no, I did mostly new stuff. It all worked. I was getting applause breaks. It was just like it, it couldn't have been better. I really? Know, like, I could have easily fallen on my face and gone hamana hamana hamana, but uh, it worked. What did I tell you? All the pieces fit. Because you all get all the planets lined up. You know, you get the feeling that after that amount of time, your timing would be off. Things. Like, I talk to other yeah. comedians, and they say, "Yeah, well, no, it's not. Yeah. I had to. You know, it was rather strange. I had to stretch. Perfect. I had to un- remember my material, which I, you know." Um, and I'm talking when I. I think somebody mentioned that to me was bubbles. 
who mm. God knows he he remembers his act. His act is almost written in stone, and yet he said he went out there and he was forgetting what he his you know his uh-huh. his his set list as it were you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it it was not uh, not the easiest thing in the world. So yeah, I was a bit rusty the, I, the first few times I got on after March, which was like seven months later. And uh, I was a little busy. A lot of my friends were going up, and they were forgetting stuff. Like, oh, good, I'm not the only one forgetting stuff. I would and love then to you go I, on a couple of times, and it comes back. You know, I would love to have been at one of those shows because I would love to just see, you know, a comedian when all of a sudden he's rusty. Oh yeah, you have the you mic know, upside it, down. Hello, is this off? Is this on? I, I say this to the audience out there. You don't understand this about comedy. It's not that they just get up and tell a bunch of jokes, and how easy is that? It's taken years and years to hone that act and to get your timing down. And uh, I, I, to even explain timing is a science in and of itself, okay? Yep. And, and so you spend your whole life honing this thing. And you, the only way, it's almost like an athlete, the only way you're going to keep on your game is by constantly doing it. And so when you don't have your gym, okay, and you don't have a place to work out in, your muscles atrophy. Your comedy muscles atrophy. Right, exactly. They get weak. They get weak. Yeah. You're a quivering hunk of a fell of a person. Yeah. So when you went to this comedy show the other night, were there other comedians there? Were they having problems? No, they, everybody killed. It was a good night because people they had been on stage since March a few times, so everybody did well. Now, what did they do and, about uh, the audience? <laughs> I killed them dead. What did they do? What did they do about the audience? Did they have them uh, 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 six feet apart from each other? Or? Yeah, they had them six feet apart. There was about fifty people there. They all had masks on. They were there to laugh, and they was laughing. They was laughing big time. Well, that's so, uh, that's uh, it, although it's indoors, that's a pretty safe environment you you had there. Okay. Well, I haven't been sick since I've uh, been performing since this virus thing started. So yeah. Well, know, don't t- don't take like, hey, <laughs> don't take risks. You know? Oh no, no! You know, my mask is on. When we, when we're on stage, we don't wear the mask with a, with a mic rubber on. We'll I haven't, I haven't been out. I don't think I've been out in about a week and a half or something like that. Yeah, I haven't yeah, left the house. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm waiting for that second shot. I know with the first shot, I've got a certain amount of protection, but I just, you know, my feeling is, God forbid, I should come down with COVID, wind up on a ventilator, and I was almost at the finish line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, and and uh, I feel sorry for anybody right now who's dying because mm-hmm. they they could it could have been prevented, you know, if they just watch themselves. Yeah, you know what yeah. they found out today? This is an interesting statistic came over on my watch because my watch has you know um, has uh, has news coverage and so on. And it said that they found that if you double mask, wear your mask tightly, and double mask, the chance you lower your the percentage of uh, of protection you get is ninety six point seven percent. Well, if you put on one hundred and twenty four masks, you know, uh, uh, yeah. But all I'm saying is, double masking is going to be better, almost, Uh than getting the the shot, right? Yeah, I can barely breathe with one mask on. I'm inhaling my own snot and stuff. Ah, yeah. What's the sound of one mask on? <laughs> yeah. The, like d- bad d- d- now, as a comedian on stage, they didn't make you wear a mask, right? No. Not on stage, but when you're there, you're hanging out, you got to wear a mask. Right. And then you go on stage, you take it you off. You go on stage, you rip the mask off, you're going free, free, free. Love. Well, it's, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, can I say fucking without a condom? Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or That's I remember when I was rubber when rubber I was a kid, like... they used to let us go naked swimming in the camp pool. Ah, okay, oh and to just be in the water with your balls floating free. You oh, know, yeah, if, right. if, if, yeah, when, like... when you take your mask off, it's that feeling again. <laughs> you know. No, I know. We yeah. had the mask on, so. Yeah, it was a, it was a fun that needed even I'm going out again tonight. Hey, Let's listen, mics, you know we here. we don't we, we don't want to wear the, who who likes wearing the mask? Nobody likes wearing the mask. Nobody, but you got to do it. You know? Yeah, you got to do it. 
So, you know, you do it. You do and, it. and if we do it long enough, eventually we'll start getting some kind of herd immunity and life is going to be much better for all of us. So I hope so. I certainly yeah. hope so. I want this thing to end for everybody. So you've been watching any of the impeachment hearings at all? No, 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 I haven't. I, I, I hear right on the news. Well, just before I came in here, they started with the impeachment hearing, the actual, uh -huh. the, the actual uh, indictment against him, you know, and here's why he was guilty and so on. And they go, okay, we're going to make our case now. The Democrats are going to make their case. Okay, the Congress uh -huh. is going to make their case. Uh, and uh, they said, this will take 16 hours. And immediately I went, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't go 16 hours of this. I had, you know, I mean, I've. I, how often do I have to relive this this horrible right. thing that went on in this country? I mean, it's hard. It's hard to when watch. This, yeah, when you impeach a guy and you win, that means he's not in office anymore. Well, no, he's already no, not in office, no, no. So. You got you impeach him, but that's only an indictment. That's like a grand oh, okay. jury indictment. Then you send it over to the Senate, Sorry. and they hold the trial there. Yeah. You know, but geez, you know, we got to relive every moment of, of not forget the day at the Capitol. I think we should all have to relive that because that oh, should sure. that that's should be an book. object lesson to all of oh, us. That's, that's going in the history books from the little kiddies. In fact, you know, I was watching a documentary, uh, about five, six documentaries, each on a different member of the Nazi regime during World War II and their history uh -huh. and what they did and so on. Eichmann, uh, Goering. Uh, Speer, or Speer, actually, is how it's pronounced. I put Speer. Speer. Uh, uh, who was another one? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, the, the PR guy. Uh, uh, oh, the, uh, the, yeah. the, the, yeah. the, 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 uh, My mind's a, bl a, bl a guy. blank right now. I'll come up with it. Anyway, I'm watching all of these. Things, was, uh, and I'm watching. The, the Hess, Rudolf Hess, the square. Well, the Hess, they didn't do. They didn't do no, capture him, but he wanted in England. For yeah, he wound up in, uh, being incarcerated for like twenty years or something like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, but uh, no, uh, Goebbels, Goebbels. So I'm watching uh, the one on Goebbels, right? <laughs> and specifically because Goebbels was like the PR guy for the Nazi regime. Uh, he was like a PR guy. Uh, he came up with all the slogans and the advertising and the way the costumes should look and so on, oh, you yeah, know, all the yeah. frills and how to present it. He was a yeah, master man. at that. He was a master at that. And um, um, Ger uh, Gehring um, uh, did all this, and I'm watching as how he did it. He would do things like one of the things they described is he would have Hitler fly into a place in an airplane on an airfield and then have the plane land and Hitler gets out. And then he gives his speech. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, I remember the shot of, I can't remember where it was, Arizona, where uh -huh. Air Force One pulls up on this tarmac with the crowds <laughs> waiting for him. It had the same <laughs> dramatic appeal. Wow. They, all, they, they were taking... A lot of things out of Goebbels' pages, out of his book. <laughs> oh God! So right? All a Nazi. Right. Any ideas are a Nazi. Right. Uh, just the way you perpetuate a lie constantly, constantly, and if you perpetuate a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. Yeah. Okay. It's called the big lie. And uh, I watch this, and as I'm watching it, I'm thinking to myself, "Man, do we ever dodge a bullet here?" Uh huh. You know, because if this guy had gotten reelected. We were in deep shit, just oh, yeah. deep trouble, because he uh, would have taken that as a sign to go all the way. Yeah, you know, and he tried to hijack this democracy. I mean, it's just it was it's so scary if you go back and watch what the Nazi did, the Nazis did, and then compare it to what Trump did. It's out of the same rule book. It's out of the same yeah. play play. What's the what do they call it in football? A, a playbook. Yeah, big playbook. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's out of the same playbook. And I just went, oh, man, did we dodge a bullet. Yeah. But I don't know if we dodged it long enough because I think eventually somebody else is going to come along and he's going to okay. do it better than Trump did it. It's going to be you somebody know. worse, yeah. But this yeah. guy learned from Boyd Cohen, so that doesn't yeah. say at all. You know, that guy was the antichrist if you ever met Yeah, him, so. and then there were some other people that learned from Marty Cohen, which is another problem. Marty Cohen, too, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hello. Hello. Uh, uh, one last thing. Uh, you know, you're you're doing this on your iPhone. Yeah. Right. 
What, I think so. What's happened with your computer? Have you've never gotten it working we again? We tried. We tried. My friend brought over some device that got us in that uh, zip code to get the to the on to get the password, but it wouldn't let us on. So I don't know. We got. I don't know what to do. Well, you know what you do with the computer? You simply uh, reformat it. You re just lay everything in there. All your old stuff is going to be gone. Oh, I don't, I don't have any. Just, yeah. Oh, well, then, then they can take that, that machine and put in a new operating system, and you're, oh, good, yeah. and you're good to go. That'll cost me, but I got the dough right now. If so. I were there, I'd do it for you. I wish you were. It's, it's pretty simple. What have you got? Is it a Windows oh, machine? A yeah, Windows machine? Uh, show you a picture of it. Oh, no, so I don't. I don't I, well, I got to see a picture of a dead computer. There it is. But there it is. Wait a minute. Okay. Now, okay, if anybody knows how to get into there without your password, let me know, okay? Because then I will let him know, and we'll, we'll, we'll make the attempt. But I think sure. the worst, the, the one thing you could do is just erase the drive and then re-put on the operating system, and you're good to go. I don't know how. I don't know how. Is there anybody who's watching this show in Las Vegas who can go out <laughs> to uh, 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 Pearl's place and get his machine going? You mean they go to Pearl's place? You took Free it. You, you took like it to. A, you took it to a computer store and they couldn't do it. I didn't take it anywhere. My friend, who was oh, I have a good friend, a comedian friend who just moved into the complex where I am, and he had some equipment that I can fix it. So uh, he put the thing in, and uh, he did this, he did that, he did this. We almost got there, but that uh, no sale. So yeah, but I mean, uh, if you yeah, if, 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 if you were to just reformat the disk, then put install the operating system once again in there, it will uh -huh. then ask you what do you want as a password and so on and so forth, and that's and then you've got it working as a fresh new machine. Mm. Yeah. But I'm not Wait, there. I'm not there. Come on over. Come on over. Huh? You want to come over and not chop me into pieces? Come over and help. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get on a fucking I'll get on a fucking airplane and come out there just to fix your goddamn machine. Sorry, risk you COVID. Ri risk COVID and spend a fortune on the plane. Come on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I could probably do it for you. I bet mean, you could. You know yeah. about this. No, stuff. I mean, I it's not, it, no, if, if all you want to do is get that machine working again, you don't care if you lose all the stuff that's on the machine. I don't have anything saved. I just got emails and this. Okay, and this all right. Part. But if you don't have anything you want saved, then that whole thing can just be reformatted with the, with oh, the operating okay. system. It's either sledgehammer and some chocolate syrup. Okay, if anybody's listening who lives in uh, in the greater uh, Las Vegas area, or maybe if in you live, you, City, you, can, you can live in Pahrump, you know, <laughs> you can live in some of the outlying desert cities. You can live in Pahrump or Boulder City. We'll but get we some need you to go you over to that. Stephen Pearl's place and fix his machine. <laughs> so we don't have to see him kind of wobbling with the iPhone for the whole thing. See, like that. Look at it. He, he's nervous. He's uh, shaking like a leaf. Man, yeah. I've been up for seven days, man. Remember the 80s? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Yeah. Are you still able to lay your hands on drugs? Because I know that uh, pot is your drug of choice, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. There's a dispensary right on the corner. Oh, oh, okay. So it's right there. Do they deliver? Do they deliver? It is. Huh? My place it is. Really? There's a dispensary called Green right around the corner from me. Now, do you do you actually smoke pot now, or do you vape? No, I, I smoke. I'm old fashioned. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like the vaping. It's, Vaping's fun. I'll take it any way I can. The only thing is, I have a hard time rolling those vapes. They just don't seem to. Oh yeah, no, no, I just I put some in the bowl, a couple of hits. I'm happy. I cough. <laughs> I, let's do a JoJo Gun album. Who cares? Okay, so you basically you just been staying home a lot, getting stoned. <laughs> you got a problem with that? What else am I going to do? Did you get, did you get a, a check from the government? I'm waiting. I got like $2 in my account. Come on, Uncle Joe. You can do it. Come you on, Joe. Come on, Uncle Joe. You can Bye, do Uncle it. Grandpa. You yeah. can do it. Yeah. Uncle. I met Joe Biden the other week. It was a touching experience. But I got to tell you. Thank you very much. Is that, is that your only <laughs> Biden joke? That's the only one I got. It's a touching experience. <laughs> 
Hey, listen, I've been having, I've got the worst backache today. So I'm oh, going to call this, I'm going to call this to a close. We've gone we'll way over. Our job over to fix it. And, uh, and anybody who wants to fix Steve Pearl's machine, give us, uh, give him a uh, give us, write us a letter, uh, 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 Alex at net <laughs> and tell us where he can get a hold of you, and then you can go out and fix it. But I don't think there is anybody in Nevada listening to Probably us. not, but take all the green pieces of paper out of your daddy's wallet and send it to Stephen Pearl yeah. at 355. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Soupy Sales got in a lot of trouble for that. <laughs> Can't fire me. I have no job. L Ladies and gentlemen, there he is. That's Stephen Pearl. Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Alex. All oh, the earthquakes starting to get. Ah! Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our good friend Stephen Pearl, and he'll uh, probably be back with us again next week. I got I talked about it at the end of this interview. Uh, I I don't know what happened, but I was I woke up this morning and I must have been sleeping wrong, okay, with the worst backache I've had in years. I mean I don't get these kind of backaches, but I must have slept kind of wrong or something, and I just like mm, you know. And it's just, I mean, I can't, I really have a hard time walking, getting up. If I get up from here, it takes me a while. I can't straighten myself out, and it's, ah! So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the show tonight, or as best as I can, if I feel that at some point I'm reaching a level of pain, uh, uh, then I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to quit it early, <laughs> you know. But if I'm just sitting here in this chair, and I think I can survive it. Anyway, mm, let me take a couple of ibuprofen. Mm. Mm. But I don't know what, I mean, I don't know what happened. I was just, I was sleeping, and I woke up, and I just went, I just moved, changed my position, and I went, oh, God. And it, I got up, and it was just killing me. So I've tried everything. I put cold on it. I put heat on it. I've been taking ibuprofen. I've been taking aspirin. And I even took one of Marjorie's uh, 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 really strong pain pills. And it, you know, at least it put me in la-la land. But uh, I was in la-la land for most of the day. And uh, it, uh, it uh, kind of helped a little bit. But, I mean, it's just, it's incredible. It's just just uh, uh, un unrelenting. So, um, I don't know. What it was, uh, getting old, it just sucks. It just really, really sucks. Well, let me let everybody on here. Maybe they can do all the talking for me, okay, as we, um, we go over to our Zoom panel as they uh, are there. There we go. There's, uh, there's, uh, oh, and here comes, uh, here comes Charlie Wallace as well. We've got Robert and Natali. We've got Alan. We've got Brian Neary. And we've got me with an incredible backache. By the way, write that one down, Robert, for tomorrow. Uh, this is our sergeant of arms is Robert Natali. It's recording secretary. Recording please. secretary. Sergeant yeah. of arms is a bouncer. Yeah. Okay. You're recording secretary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I have in my hand here the minutes from last night's meeting. Yeah, um, and so would you care? To, would you care to recite them now? And no, certainly, certainly, yes. certainly. This way, I can you know I could get out of here if necessary. Um, <laughs> got off to a flying standstill with Phil Meyer. Um, <laughs> why? Why we have that guy on the show is beyond me. Yeah. He, he absolutely is not a conservative. <laughs> He's not a Republican. He's just a Trump acolyte. The preceding was an editorial and may not reflect the views of Gabnet management. Uh, 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 it's not that it, uh, I don't agree with you. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. No, I just, okay. you know, I mean, I figure I'm, I think there's a place for Phil. And I, I figure that's on Tuesdays at 1030. Right. It's your right. show. It's my show. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're right about that. I, I'm glad you get that. Some people yes. don't. At any rate, yeah. Phil, of all the dribble, I, I mean, of all the things that he said, <laughs> um, he did say one thing that was true. 
Yeah. And I quote, mm -hmm. he said, there's no accounting for stupid. I'll let you put your own joke in at that point. Yeah. 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 Um, we then went on to Alex complaining that he hasn't gotten his second shot. Yeah. Um, which is very annoying to those of us who haven't had their first shot yet. Or I, I'm over it. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, I'll calm uh, down now. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Um, uh, uh, there's some kind of thing coming back at us here. Hold on a second. Yeah. Let me turn it down now. Let me bring it back up. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm sorry you haven't gotten your first shot. Have you tried? Oh, oh and how? Really? Yes. We're, we're listed, both my wife and I are listed in, in about 15 different places within a 75-mile radius. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. have you, are, you, are, you, are you set up to go to one of those places? We have no appointment, but every one of them tells us, you know, stay tuned. Oh, okay. It's they all say the same thing. Anyway, um, Alex mm -hmm. then went on to say that he would not be posting these shows any longer on Facebook or YouTube. And my wife would like to lodge an objection because she can't stay up that late at night. And it's the only way she gets to see her dashing, handsome, charming, witty. Oh, I'm sorry. That was written in the margin. Uh, husband. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, um, I, I did post them last night anyway, but I may not tonight. I'm, I keep threatening this. Yeah, you, you know. keep well. She's she's most upset about this. Yeah. At any rate. Okay. Well, then I'll post them for her. How's that? That's awful sweet of you. She will appreciate that. Yeah, it's a lot of work I have to go to. We we then went on to making cat puns. Um, yeah. Most of which were wait for it appalling, <laughs> appalling. No, seriously, I'm not kidding around. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> So we know what you've been doing all day. Yeah, right? Yeah. No, this took five <laughs> minutes. Trust you know me. something? Some of those were perfect jokes. Yeah, we made that one already. <laughs> we then went on to uh, the instrument of the week, uh, played by whatever. And what we decided was that whatever should play solo. Solo, nobody can hear them. <laughs> We then learned that uh, there are many of those, right? Play by the window so we can all help them out, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we then learned a bunch of stuff. And I, I started to fog out a little, so I may not have these in proper sequence. We learned that Alex can jerk off in five seconds. <laughs> we learned that Alan can't get an erection. Wait, wait, wait a minute. To begin with, that was a joke. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, you know, this is what was stated. I don't want people to think that I, I have an orgasm that fast. All right, seven or eight seconds. Okay, I'll go with okay. that. Okay. Um, and we also learned that Ray's going to get parts, which I assume are for Kevin's new car. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Then Alex gave a lecture on French pussy at some point. Wait, I wait think. a minute, hold on a second. Yeah, me, meow, mew, me, No, mew, oh, I'm French pussy. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> when I was talking about the fact that in France, yeah, uh, yeah. meow mix would be new mix. Yeah, right. That was the point at which I fogged out. Well, wait um, a minute, but it's, it's, it's to show you that I have some worldly idea that other <laughs> countries use different... It, you know, you go to France, and it's really interesting because they have a different word for everything. Don't complain. You put them in charge. Yeah, no, I, 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 I know. I made him the secretary, recording then, secretary. We, that we, we, we then went on to uh, listening about, again, I kind of fogged out, so I got half the story of something about Kevin's false positive. But I wasn't upset because I knew he was too old to be pregnant. So I really didn't put much stock in it. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you're not pregnant. You're not, pre guys. you're not pregnant, according to. No. And then finally, um, we got Ray Renati's rendition of a song I'm sure we'll all hear plenty of on Valentine's Day, Pimples on My Tongue. Can I get a second, please? Anybody want to second these? Uh, these I uh, wouldn't if I were you. These minutes? Anybody? Second them? I, 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 anybody? <laughs> anybody want to second them? Okay, There's yes, second. Alan. Do I, I have a second. Okay. Let's move second. Do I have a third? Do I have any thirds? Oh, no. No. Uh, okay, do we have a fourth? Do we have a fourth? Anybody for a fourth? Did we go that far? You only have to do seconds, right? Yeah, just a second, I think. But Don't write this down. Alex started out tonight by complaining about his bake aching back. 
It's already down. Or I remember that when I was in the Himalayas once, I met up with a Sherpa who said, oh, my baking yak. Oh. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Okay, We're off. yeah. Something was burning, and he said, oh, my baking yak. <sighs> okay. Oh. Oh, man. Have you ever had a bad backache, any of you guys? <laughs> this is no, yeah. last night. Every day. Man, I just, I just, I don't know what yes. I did. I must have slept upside down or something, you know? And did you just, sleep with the window open? You know something? I think was the window open. It may have been because... If it was who, cold, that's what I, I did that last night. And, and it hurt, killed your back? Yep. See... Marjorie likes the window open, even when it's minus zero out there. Yeah, you know? that'll, that'll, that'll tighten you up real fast. Marital yep. discord. Okay, I got <laughs> it. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, yes, yes, Alan. So uh, going back to your uh, before the, this show with Stephen. Yeah. All he's got to do is get on his iPhone, I guess, and type in... Uh, password reset for Windows, mm -hmm. and there is software out there. You can download it from the Internet, I guess, to a friend's computer or something. I have several computers, but uh, you turn it into a thumb drive. You put the thumb drive in yeah, the machine. Yeah. You're already 10 steps ahead of where Steve can go. Yeah. Never mind. When you, you lost him at thumb drive. Okay. <laughs> you lost him at type. It's one of those little USB things that you plug in. Yeah, well, I know. Well, he knows about that. He was told about that from somebody, but he didn't know what it meant. You oh, know, okay. so, I mean, that that's a problem. I'm sorry. I came in late. Yeah. So I was I was just... Uh, yeah. No, I mean, it, 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 well, it, if I were there, I would just take his machine. I would erase his hard drive. I would then reinstall the operating system and put in a new password, you know, and get them up. How would you erase the hard drive if you can't get to it without a password? Well, you can erase a hard drive. You, you can get to it in safe mode, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think you still need a password, don't you? No. To get to that? No. no? Mm. Okay. There are a lot of different ways of getting in there. I mean, you, you know, the what you could do, I go down... Buy him a hard drive, pull the old one, put a new one in. We were good to go again. Thing. Yep. So, you know, whatever. I'd get yeah, him up and running. It seemed important to you. So I thought no, it, well, it it only, it's only important to me is because when he and I have to talk to him on the iPhone, the, it's shaking because he's got to hold it, you know. Yeah. And the sound on it is kind of, you know, so. But yes, if that's a, if that's a official term I can use. <laughs> You know, I'm using my my new work laptop tonight. Are you really with, with my Logitech camera? And it's really really clear. Yo, it looks very good yeah. and very yes. loud. It's clean. Yes, it's fine. That's what I'm gonna do with the Logitech looks, camera. Looks great. Which, which model did oh, you get? Oh, there we go. Now he's gonna do now the thing. Okay, <laughs> fancy getting fancy schmancy. Look at this. Oh, no. oh, oh. Ryan, what model Logitech? Did yeah. Oh, Logitech? I don't know. I won this at a car thingy. I don't know. You won it at a car thingy? That sounds yeah, like something Kevin would have gotten. The raffle. It was a raffle prize. Yeah, so I don't know. It's just a Logitech little clip-on camera thing. Your, oh, your camera is so mail. clear, we can see the half worm coming out of your apple. <laughs> see, the thing is, it, it, even the cheapest, even the cheapest Logitech now is pretty damn good. You know, they're pretty yep. clean. Well, I'm using a $200 Logitech here. This is like I just a, got one in the mail today. This is a Brio mm -hmm. that I have here. Yeah, I, that didn't have real good ratings where I went. Yeah, so. well, the Brio, when uh, I bought it, was the best thing there was. You know, I, I, I'm I, still on a laptop camera, so yeah. I... Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks good. You in know. the next day or two, I'll get the Logitech up and running. You know, if I switched over to my mm. other camera, which is here, which is a Logitech, I have two cameras here. Uh, you, you, you have a hard time telling the difference between the two, really, you know. But, I mean, um, um, I'm very happy with I've been happy with I the listened, I listened to the Trump supporter on which Logitech to get. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Bill. Yeah. And which he, Logitech did he tell you to buy? He's uh, the the C920. He's big into photography. So. Well, C920 yeah. is not the best. 
The Brio is actually, the Brio is the best. There may be some, uh, people may say it's too expensive for how good it is. Yeah, maybe, know. I don't know. But I, but I bought mine, I'll tell you how I bought mine. I bought mine cheaper than usual. I went uh, I went to Best Buy. This was about a couple, two, couple of years ago. went to Best Buy, and I looked it up on, uh, on uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Amazon, and I found I, they were selling it for like 139 bucks. So I just went in and said, see, 139 bucks. So they gave it to me for 139 bucks. So I got two of them pretty cheap. Now you can't find them anywhere for under like about 230, 240, something like that. You know, yep. but it's a really, it's a very, it's a 4K camera, you know, so it's, it's I don't need 4K. You better watch it, Alan. He'll have you buying the 60 terabyte, 15 <laughs> drives and a, and a rack. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What are your 10 I'm, pictures? <laughs> a raid, a raid. I have I a raid. I have a raid over here. I I'm use sure a raid. you do. I save all these shows on it. You know why? Because with a raid, I'll never lose the information. You know, because what happens is it it it, it uh, takes about a third of the disk space and creates a backup, so that you're constant, you constantly have something. That if one of your drives goes out, you just throw a new drive in and it rebuilds everything while you can still use the array. Uh, and and these are spend, hard drives, folks. Yeah. Or you can spend fifty nine dollars and plug in an external hard drive and let it back up as you go too. Yeah. Well, that's good. But it doesn't mean that it's not going to go bad on you. If any of my drives here go bad, I still have all my information. And all I have to do is put a new drive in there, and then it rebuilds everything up and, you know. Same thing with a backup external drive. No. Yeah, but you, if you're no. running a day, I don't want to get technical, but if you're running a database, an external drive won't be enough because uh, it I, won't. I, yeah, I'm not running. It backs it up as it happens, so you can actually show a point in time. Oh, I see. I see what, what the saying. database looked like at a specific point oh. in time. I used to run one at work. Yeah. Okay. Learn something new every day. No, but raids are a great way of making sure you don't lose your information ever, yes. ever. You could on a, on a backup it. drive. That backup drive could go bad, and then you've lost everything. Yeah. Well, Phil has a raid, and I think that uh, because he's got six hundred and twenty terabit. Of information, he needs the extra space. Yeah, well, he doesn't need that much space. He he has what's I, I can't remember the kind he of. He has a lot of pictures that are I taken in raw, and raw it takes up a lot of megabits until you. I got about twelve terabytes. After after uh, we account for the space that's needed to do the redundancy, I have mm -hmm. about twelve terabytes in here. So. I don't know much about that stuff. Just right. what he told me. So yeah. And I could, I told him he, he likes saving his pictures in raw. He likes he the word raw. Ooh, you know. You know. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna crop them and compress them, raw is the way to go to start with. That much I know. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it supposedly is the is the best way if you're Phil. You know, but I mean, okay. raw. No. I mean, basically, I think just the old brownie with a negative was just fine, so far as I'm concerned. I managed to back those up just by putting them in a drawer. That's right. <laughs> you know. Speaking of raw pictures, Larry Flint, right? Oh, yes. Yes. My old boss. Yeah. My old boss, no. Larry Flint, died today. Or yes. No. Yeah. Had a heart attack. He, he belongs you? in heaven as far as I'm concerned. What would you say? He belongs in heaven, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no, he 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 did. I think if it, time will show that he did a lot in his time for freedom of the press. Absolutely. You know? yeah. uh, but it's interesting. It's interesting because I always used to point him out as being a reluctant, a reluctant hero, because the reason <laughs> he went out and defended freedom of speech is to protect his own ass. Mm -hmm. But what he did. Even though he's protecting his own ass, and that was his motivation for doing it, he managed to make it better for other people. So fine, you know. To me, he, I always had a lot of a, a lot of respect for him. Also, because he used to sign a paycheck for me, so I, you know, I can be bought. I had a lot of respect for him too. My right hand, also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But every yep. month, every month for about I think what was it seven years, something like that. I used to write a column for a Hustler, 
and mm. uh, uh, you know, paid me a dollar. How to get off in five to eight seconds? I'll bet. <laughs> well, no, my my things were more political than that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Did I ever write about? I wrote wrote about sex occasionally, but it wasn't it wasn't required that we write about sex. Oh, okay. You know. Uh, so and I wrote. I did some pretty good writing there. I was very. Uh, my. Uh, it was because Bruce David, who was the uh, editor of Hustler at the yeah, time, yeah, that was a good article. Was a good friend of Hustler. mine, and he said to me, "Why don't you start writing for us?" And I said, "Yeah, but I'm not a writer." He said, uh, "Just write like you talk," mm -hmm. and that was enough for me. And I started writing, and I would do a column every month. And I think when I was finally finished after seven years, I was a pretty good writer, you know. Um, I think it was actually it was Al Goldstein that taught me how to write by saying, write like you talk. Yeah. Just, you know, you don't have to know how to write. You know how to talk. <laughs> now just put that on paper. And I did that and it worked, you know, so. But uh, uh, I, I really enjoyed those, those things I did. And so I used to always refer to him on the air as my boss, uh, Larry Flynn. Because he was, he was one of my bosses, technically. Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. I got to move here. Oh, mm. oh God yeah. damn it! Mm. Yeah. If she then opens, that, if she opens that window tonight, I'm going to kill her. Well, <laughs> try a couple of Tylenol with that. I no, I did Tylenol. I know I did. Uh, I did. Two, I did three aspirin tonight and three ibuprofens just now. And none of them are really working that much. But then there's this OxyContin or whatever else she has. Uh -huh. Oh, tough. my. That thing. And that that uh, uh, that, that works. Yeah. <laughs> what? Just like killing a fly with a cannon. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well yeah. I mean, you know, when your back is killing you like this, you want that cannon. Absolutely. So. Uh, narcotic. Chiropractor do it in no time. And, you know, and, I kind of figure at my age, what I could use is a good heroin habit. Uh, because I got nothing to lose. At my age, how long am I going to be a heroin addict? Right? You know? And if you, if you say, well, it might kill you. Well, yeah. So? I got bad news for you. <laughs> what? what? If you're a heroin addict, usually mm -hmm. narcotics will not let you get five to eight second orgasms. As a matter of fact... <laughs> When you're, when you're under the influence of narcotics, I'm not sure. Are, are you, you writing this down, Robert? I'm not sure how to write this down. Narcotics. I quit. Directions. I thought. I thought Alan had a serious point. <laughs> he did. Well, actually, actually, if I'm not mistaken, if you take uh, heroin, you have a hard time taking a dump, right? A good dump, because it binds you. If you take enough of it, I, that's, that's my I understanding, heard. too. Are we going into territories you're enjoying here, Robert? Uh, sure. Let sure, that. why not? Oh, come yeah. on, Robert, you've taken you know, the narcotic. You know, I never I never used cocaine, but one time I was at a party, and they offered it to me. So I said, you know, I don't really want it, but just let me see how it smells. <laughs> <laughs> I never used cocaine. I turned it into a hobby. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was a couple of years there where I was uh, I was I could afford it, you know. It was like uh, Robin Williams said, "Cocaine is God's way of telling you you're making way too much money," mm. you know. Uh, and but I didn't and I didn't I didn't spend that much money on it, you know. I used to cut it all the time so I wouldn't get mm. too hooked on it. So whatever. You, you can cut it with uh, fiberglass, and you wonder why your nose is bleeding all the time. <laughs> well, no, but I made a good I made made a good uh, 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 a motorboat out of it. Yeah, yeah I was going to say your your sinuses have curtains. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. You know who else I used to work for? I no. Technically, see, I mean, like I say, like I worked for for Larry Flint, but I used to work for yeah. Chris Craft. Ah, uh, boats. Because uh, because Chris Kraft owned radio and television stations, and I worked for one of their television stations in San Francisco, Channel 44, yeah. Cable 12 on most systems. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, they had radios. They had TV stations. That hmm. They finally sold them out. But uh, So uh, the guy, and the guy I worked for, the guy who was running the station, I think, was one of the sons of the guy who started Chris Kraft. 
Wow. Remember Chris? Do they still make Chris Craft at all? I think so. Yeah, they, have, they have a big show at uh, uh, Tahoe, Lake Tahoe, every year. Oh, really? And they're so, all the wooden Chris, uh, Chris Craft boats, all those wooden boats. Really beautiful. My friends go there. They were they're wooden really... boats, weren't they? They yeah, were beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Do they still make them, though? No. I don't know, but they they certainly restore them all the time. Well, yeah, yeah. So I, I know of one at the bottom of Lake Tahoe, along with a Cadillac and a trailer. What? How did that I, happen? A friend of mine had a Chris Craft, and it was... Huh. He had a Cadillac and was backing it into the water on the ramp in Lake Tahoe. Funny you mentioned Lake Tahoe. And he had a little too much drugs or alcohol in his system really? and lost control. And the car and the trailer and the boat went into the water. Mm -hmm. The boat, I think they got out because it floated mm -hmm. somehow or I don't yeah. know. It's like uh, 30 years ago. Yeah. But the Cadillac they left. John Irving. Uh, uh, John Irving. John Larkin. I keep mixing you. I, I, I thought you were another street, excuse me, in San Francisco. Uh, John Larkin. That's how I remember your name is Larkin Street. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I used to work yeah. for uh, Robert Redford. Really? Yeah. A yeah. double? No, no. I, I used to work uh, at the Sundance uh, Institute, the Sundance Film Festival thing. Oh, mm. really? Yeah. yeah. I did that for about about... 15 years every year i'd go up there and work for them you know yeah. um i was you know i for one time i i was a driver i'd pick up famous people at the airport mm -hmm. and then i was uh i was in the prints driving the film prints to all the different theaters you know mm -hmm. the festivals going on mm -hmm. it was fun wow he's yeah. still he's still alive isn't he yeah robert yeah. Redford's still alive i just don't think he's done much lately yep. i think right. usually at a certain point they slow down you know, and they just go, eh, I've had enough of that, you know. Is yeah. Robert Redford dead? No. No, he was doing the Iron Man. Remember, he did a couple Iron Man, I think. Yeah, well, he's, he's producing now. Yeah. He's Paul producing. Newman. Paul Newman's dead. Oh, Paul Newman's dead. Way dead. Yeah. Way dead. Yeah. And then and his salad dressing stays alive. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, I was in this, uh, standing in line at the grocery store one time, and there was like a little... Thing of Paul Newman mints, you know, and I asked the cashier. Paul Newman like, mints? Like yeah, you know, little breath mints, you know. Oh, really? They and breath I, breath. I, okay. I picked him up and I go to her, I go, you know who that is? She looks at it and she, she goes, no, who is that guy? The mint guy? I go, you don't know who that is? And I just go, man, I'm getting old. <laughs> oh, no, you know, I mean, my friend Shecky, uh, yeah. sometimes we'll talk about, you know, people who are popular and not popular and so on. She says, you know, we think everybody knows who the fuck Paul Newman is. Yeah. Well, that there's a whole yeah. generation doesn't even know who Paul Newman is and doesn't care who Paul Newman uh, is. And to yeah. us, he was a legend. You know? <clears throat> there's the old story. The Hustler. What? The Hustler was a good, big book. Yeah, but what were you, what were you saying, Robert? Hombre! There, there's an old story from David Suskind who who <coughs> divorced his wife and then went everybody anybody everybody know who David Suskind David is? David Suskind was a yeah. producer and show host in New York City. Right. He had and a weekly show on PBS. Yeah, excellent show. Yep. I thought. Anyway, he, he divorced his wife and he started going out with a couple of women that were about fifteen or twenty years younger. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he noticed was that they couldn't keep a conversation. And his phrase was, I can't go out with someone who doesn't know who Errol Flynn is. You know, it just doesn't <laughs> Well, you know what mine me. was? Mine and was, I will not go out stuff. with a woman who can't name all four Beatles. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, right. Exactly. And usually well, if I would, if I would put that question to a woman, uh, she could get most of them. But which one do you think they never got? George. You're right. Yeah. George was the one they never got. And, mm -hmm. and, and if they didn't know who all four Beatles were, I wouldn't have sex with them unless they were hot. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I'm not falling for that one. I yeah. compromised my morality, you know. <laughs> yeah, the one with the biggest. So Robert <laughs> Redford and Paul Newman. Paul Newman was in Cool Hand Luke, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. And his best movie also, ever did. Was HUD. He also had a racing team. HUD, yeah. That's that's my, that film has my one of my favorite movie lines of all time. What's well, that? What we have here is a failure to communicate. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. That's that was yeah. cool. And Luke, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah. Anyway, so. You know what I just saw last weekend on TMC is uh, The Sweet Smell of Success. You ever see that movie? Yes. Yes. Great, great film. Movie. Great film. Great, great. film. Great uh, play. Yeah. Was it a play? It was a play before it was a movie. Yes. J.J. Hunsecker, right? Yeah. You know, he was, he was based on, what was the guy who was based on uh, the, the dude from the, the, the columnist from the 40s? Famous columnist. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember who they were basing it on, uh, but there were a lot of those gossip well, Walter columns. Winchell. Walter, Walter Winchell. Winchell. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's uh, Burt Lancaster as J.J. Hunsecker and uh, Tony Curtis as, oh, God, I'm trying to remember the name now. Cause he, he, huh? Sidney Falco. Sidney Falco. Like yeah. Yes. Falco. And it's all about, uh, you know, kissing ass in New York City. Yeah. You know. Power. Uh, it's all about power and uh, the, the newspapers. <laughs> yep. It's all about gossip. The yep. power of the gossip. Well, but, it, but it's also about power. It's basically yeah. a film about it. It's a great film. If you've never seen it, everybody, no, see it. You know. But then again, you're going to say, who's Burt Lancaster and who's uh, Tony yeah. Curtis? You know. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I've got a great Tony Curtis story. Um, I uh, I was at uh, I was with uh, Al Goldstein, and we were having dinner at um, uh, Wolfgang Puck's in uh, L.A. And I had a date with me, some woman that I was wooing, and I figured I would kind of make her be more than acquiescent to me by me taking her to Wolfgang Puck's for dinner with Al Goldstein. And as we're there. Um, Tony Curtis comes over from his table to go say hello to Al, okay? And then he comes on to my date, <laughs> right? So about, cut to about three years later in San Francisco. I'm doing my show, and I've got Tony Curtis as a guest. I can't remember whether he was live or on the phone, but I think he was, he was live. And uh, I said to him, by the way, you know, we've met before. And he said, where? I said, we met at Wolfgang Puck's. And I said, I wanted to take this up with you. You tried to pick up on my date. And he stopped for a moment and said, yeah, and if I had the chance, I'd do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was Tony Curtis. Uh, yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, I mean, that was a great movie. That was just a great movie. I always liked that movie. One of those uns one of those gems that comes up on TMC, it, uh, TM Turner Classic Movies TCM every now and then. Yeah. But anyway, so anybody watch the uh, the uh, trial of the uh, uh, of the of the of the, uh, of the Washington Six or whatever that thing is that's going on. You, <clears> you watched it, right, Robert? I did. What's your takeaway from it today? Well. Um... If you listen to the um, to the presentation mm -hmm. by the uh, by the managers, mm -hmm. it's hard to argue with their evidence. It really is. But well, this is one of those things where you've got very material evidence, and oh, everyone in that room is a witness. Yeah, yeah. Which is what's wrong with the whole process to begin with. Is that you know it's it's not a legal action; it's a political one. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but I mean, they went through this whole thing, okay? They were ushered downstairs. You saw all the security camera footage, which was incredible. And uh, they're all being hustled away, and they're happy to be hustled away and get away from that crowd. And then they're going back in, and they're going to vote in, in Trump's favor. How they can do that is beyond me. I do not understand it. You know, well, you know who's really on trial? It's the uh, fifty Republican senators. That's who's really yeah. on trial. You know. By the way, here's a great topic for conversation, I think. Mm -hmm. How would the vote in the Senate go if it were done by secret ballot? Oh, yeah. He'd yeah. Be mm -hmm. Probably he'd 90. Be I bet he would be convicted. Yep. Oh, yeah, I bet he would be, too. Yeah. Because yeah. they want to get rid of the son of a bitch, but they can't say that out loud. Of course. Why don't they have a secret ballot? I mean, wouldn't that be? 
Well, appropriate. Want, as Americans, you want a record of who voted what on what. So I get it from that standpoint, you know, yeah. sort of sunshine law kind of idea. But in this case, there might be greater freedom mm -hmm. to having a secret ballot where people can vote their conscience and the law mm -hmm. as opposed to political expediency. Uh, Charlie? In a regular trial, you don't know which juror voted what. Unless exactly. it's a unanimous vote. Exactly. Yeah. I think he's gonna yeah, but they should have the balls to be able to do it. Ah, of mm -hmm. course. You know, uh, they, they should. Don't. Well, what but are they? they what are they, they afraid of? Is what I don't understand. I mean, they're I, afraid I of. Either. They're they afraid of a guy who has absolutely no power left. They're not the afraid only, of him. The only, afraid argument, of support. The the support. only argument that I've ever heard come from that side is they keep turning back to the summer. They keep turning back to the summer. They'll start with a, you know, an answer. And every question I hear is they constantly turn back. Well, you know, back in the summer or back in 2016, they all started stirring it up. Why don't the Democrats get in trouble? Why don't the Democrats get in trouble? Because they stirred up all the crap in 2016. Or why don't they, you know, let's go back to the, the summertime when they were stirring it all up during the riots in the summertime. That's the only thing that they go back to. Well, because here's the thing. They have I, nothing I, else. I mean, Phil did it has that. has nothing to do with it. Phil did. It, is Phil, it, it doesn't even apply. Yeah. It's bullshit. Phil did that with me last night, and I said to him, don't even bring that up. That has nothing to do with this. You know, that that's a whataboutism. That is, yeah. what about, you didn't do anything about those guys in Seattle. A whole different set of circumstances, everything. Mm -hmm. This, you know. Uh, what, what, wait, 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 yes, on. Charlie. No. What were you going to say, Charlie? Charlie. I said none. Of, none of the Democrats were were egging those demonstrators on or encouraging them to, to yeah, do that. any violence. Exactly. I took one law class in college, and the thing I came away with was the professor said the following: mm -hmm. If you've got the facts on your side, you argue the facts. If you yeah. have the law on your side, you argue the law. Mm -hmm. If you have neither on your side, you jump up and down and pound the table. And that's and what, effectively that's what the Republicans have left. Yeah, to do. I mean, this whole thing about, you know, you didn't say anything about it when Seattle, blah, blah, blah. Well, a whole different set of circumstances. And I could make a case that Trump even caused that riot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I agree. Uh, totally. You know, so I mean, because certainly he's, didn't stop them. Well, what what they do? They sent the uh, they sent the feds in to to try and put the thing down and cause more trouble. Uh, you know, Seattle was not a noisy place. It was they were having some protests and things like that. But then the government went in there and stirred up the crap. Yeah, okay. yeah but it took them how long to do that? Yeah, yeah. but what it, I'm saying what I'm saying is to first. to use that as an excuse for what the president did now. I mean, yeah, this he is the fire burn up there and, and then threw gasoline on it when it was starting to calm down. Well, I think they made yeah. a very good case today showing that the president had done all these things up until now, leading up to now, to yeah. cause this to happen. That by the time he went out and gave his speech in front of that crowd, he had them all riled up for yeah. months and months and months with all these tweets about, you know, I mean, it's, he was yeah, he was he was yelling and screaming. Uh, a fixed election before he the, the last time he ran he was claiming the same thing yeah. and then he won well, what's funny is and i was listening to fox all day on the radio on sirius and, mm -hmm. and because i was driving up and down the peninsula yeah and i was listening to them all day and all they did was sit there and complain oh well they didn't prove anything today all they did was talk about what he did for the last six months they didn't prove anything so they they've got no case i'm going what are you talking about they proved that he, you know, mouthed off for the last six months. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. You know, they, they, well, they were, they were, they were talking. They didn't say anything about what he did well, to incite they, it. They were turning. Well, what? what? They, they were making the case that what he was doing. Hours, what are you listening to? Is he was creating a toxic brew? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You know. I mean, I said that for the, you know, even for the last week before he was. What what happened? Did everybody freeze up on me? Oh, boy. What is that all about? He was oh, saying the same go. thing at each rally, the same thing. Yeah. He was pounding these people with the same shit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Plus, he got all these guys to get uh, to get on an airplane and come out to see him on a yeah. certain day. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. kind of like they were committed. Aren't yeah. They? yeah. Uh, Alan, guilty by reason of insanity. <laughs> Who's guilty by reason of insanity? Trump. There well, you yeah. know, uh, you think he's gonna? You think he's gonna use that defense? I doubt it. I doubt it too because he's but that he could. Oh, like I the, think there's no. I don't think he can in that kind of a trial. No, he can't. Can. I think there's no such thing. Okay. No, I think he's going to be prosecuted for this, you know, criminally after this is over. Yeah. Georgia. Mm -hmm. Georgia. Georgia too. They're going to yeah. Georgia yeah. has begun an investigation to bring yeah. charges forward. Right. Absolutely. Good. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, and there's a difference too in that. The people in last summer were protesting something real. We all saw George Floyd killed mm -hmm. before our eyes. So he really yeah. died. Yep. Mm -hmm. Trump is queuing, is queuing up all of this anger and over a lie. The election wasn't stolen. Right. Yeah. Right. That was all. Well, but lie. you may remember the last time he ran, the first time he ran, he was doing the same thing. You know, yeah. it's it's good. they're going to steal yeah. the election from me. It's going to be stolen. The election's going to be rigged. Blah 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 blah. He, but then when he won, all of a sudden, I guess it wasn't rigged anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Then it was oh, but I won the uh, the popular vote by three million votes that were uh, that what was it that somehow. There was like well, three million illegal votes. I like I vote. like where in in two thousand in twenty twenty mm -hmm. that and a lot of the Republicans were saying that the media doesn't announce who's won. You know, the media said that uh, uh, Biden had three hundred and six and Trump had two thirty two. Mm -hmm. But in two thousand sixteen, when he had three hundred and six. He announced himself the winner. They got to make up their mind. Yeah, it's one way or the other. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, what he did here was create a situ a very bad situation. And, and I'll tell you, I, I said the other night, I saw this documentary on Goebbels, and he was Hitler's PR guy, if you want to call him that for lack of a better name. He he invented everything that's being used today in advertising and everything else. He, he invented the big lie. And the big lie is if you keep telling a lie enough times, it becomes the truth. Okay. Yep. Uh, and uh, I watched this whole documentary. A good example was there was a, uh, um, uh, uh, a, a scene they showed where Hitler's plane had a, had a small plane that landed at an airport, and people were waiting at the airport for Hitler to give a speech. And what they would do is they would send this airplane around, and it would impress people because air travel was new and so on. And it was so new that, uh, that when somebody flew like that, it was impressive. And they impressed people by him coming in and landing at the airport <coughs> and then getting off the airplane and giving the speech and then getting back on the plane and taking off, and everybody got very impressed. And all of a sudden, I remembered Arizona here in this last election, and Air Force One pulling up down the tarmac of this airport where all these people were waiting to see him give a speech for the same reason. That theater. Georgia. Right. Same thing. Same thing in Georgia. Mm -hmm. and, Pulled the and, plane up behind him, and he was there, and the plane was And when I him. watched what, what Goebbels did and how he finessed Hitler into power, okay, all I could think of was, man, we dodged a bullet this time. Because if this guy had gotten reelected, oh. it would be Germany all over again. It would have been deeper and deeper. You know, I, yeah. I, I yeah. fought that whole... I fought that whole theory, you know, no, not Hitler, not Hitler. But the more I, I studied and looked at this guy and mm -hmm. followed him around and looked at documentaries and, and compared him to Hitler and spoke to my mother-in-law, who actually went through all that, mm -hmm. I was convinced that this guy was on that path. He was on that path, and yeah. he's, still, he's still lurking. I am absolutely sure that he watched Hitler's way of operating oh, his sure way of did. doing pub public relations the whole thing 
Mein the, Kemp. The, the, sen the sense of the sense that, of theater. He used that same theory. Yeah. He used that same theory in business, and you knew that because right. that's how he did his business. And he figured he's probably going to just take that right into the politics. I agree. That was obvious Captain. the way he did that. It's the art of the deal. Yeah. But, but it don't work in politics. But I mean, there he did some checks and balances, he, and yeah. luckily for us, it was. But watching this stuff of Hitler, and then I watched all the other documentaries too. There was one there about Goebbels, and another one about uh, um, um, Speer, Albert Speer, who was designed uh -huh. all the buildings and everything. And I looked at it, and I went, you know, it's like it, it's. I'd like to say it was deja vu, but this is deja vu now, <laughs> hearkening it's, back to that. Yes, you know, and it is. and I'm not I'm saying this, folks, to... because I'm anti-Trump. I'm saying this because we dodged a bullet. We were getting ready to do another Hitler's Germany, okay? And he wanted the same outcome, you know. Yeah, there was a, there's a documentary running on. Uh, I think it's Netflix on on the. Uh highlights of the world war and you see how he did that how he worked his empire and it it's scary and also somewhere. also down to getting a group of people to make a scapegoat out of the mexicans in this particular case yep. uh yeah. in 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 yeah. germany it was it was the jews although the, the, what hitler did was he um because germany after world war ii was very broke and everybody in germany was very very broke and they blamed the Jews, because the yep. Jews had a lot of money and were controlling the money, and they used and the only reason they made the Jews the enemy was they wanted what they had. In other words, they could make all the Jews look bad, and then they could t go in and take all the money, all the property, all the clothing, all the jewelry, all of that, and that's what financed Germany during World War II. Was like it was financed by Jewish wealth. They did it to Austria. They walked right in there, and they all said, "Oh, he's yeah. just so great." Just now, I, right the only there. place uh, uh, the only place Trump was stupid was the Mexicans don't have anything. Uh, yeah. Yes, John. There, there, there was a lot of American corporations that financed Hitler too, though, before World War II. Oh yeah, sure. absolutely. A lot of the big ones, like uh, some of them, are still around. And you know, um, well, I'll tell you. you want know, me to give you a good a good example? Yeah. Uh, do you know how they kept track of all the people in the concentration camps? No. Uh, IBM punch IBM cards. Yeah. yeah. IBM. Yep. Okay. You ever heard of Pete's Coffee and Teas? Yeah. Well, they, they that that was a private company that was started in Berkeley, but they sold out to this conglomeration. Um, and then I just read in the newspaper a couple months ago. The family that owns the corporation that owns it's a um, German conglomerate, isn't it? Yeah, it's a it's a German. But but the uh, the people that run the company <laughs> are like the descendants of the people that originally owned the company back in World War II, and mm -hmm. they used Jewish slave labor back in mm -hmm. during World yeah, War right, II. Right. So every time you go to Pete's, now you ask, "Hey, you guys know?" Oh, okay, I'll be there in a sec. <laughs> Tell them, "Hey, you guys know who owns you?" <laughs> Coors beer, Adolf Coors. Yeah, of course. Yeah. His friends with adolf hitler yeah yeah sure well a lot of the um uh, i'll tell you a lot of the beer companies got very mm -hmm. frightened during world war ii because they were all german companies pabst yeah. and yeah. so on and they were afraid mm -hmm. of the backlash by yeah. about being german that it was going to cause budweiser yeah henry yeah. ford how about henry ford henry, henry ford, ford wasn't 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 german he was, well, fascist, he was he a was, fascist, though. Oh, he's a fascist, absolutely. He was an anti, yeah, big anti-Semitic. Ford Motor Company. He had yes. a newspaper out of Flint, Michigan, right, uh, Robert, yeah. if I remember correctly? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, uh, Flint, Michigan, which mm -hmm. was the most fascist newspaper in America and anti-Semitic to the core. To yeah. the my, absolute my favorite core. Hitler supporter that nobody knows about is Lindbergh. Oh, oh yes, yeah. a great yeah. American yeah. hero. He yeah. turned out to be a scumbag when all was said and done. Well, did you see well, this? We should stop all the airplanes. Mm -hmm. Did you see the series they did on uh, HBO, which was yeah. based on a book? I can't remember by who. Uh, in, in, Philip Roth. Philip Roth, and it's yeah. about Lindbergh actually being a fascist and running for president, and becoming president, and America becomes a fascist country. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah! Isn't yeah. that a series now? Yeah. No, uh, 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 Lindbergh was an absolute asshole. Okay. He was, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How about J.P. Morgan? Was he a Hitler person? 
No. Uh, he was a banker that had connections. Yeah, he did. He I know. Lent, lent the money. I know he did a lot of business with Germany. Yeah. He well, did. I think everybody did business with Germany at one time or another before the war. It's a question yeah. of who was supporting them during the war. And yeah. when you think that uh, Jews went to the gas chambers because they could keep uh, a tabs on where each and every one of them were because they used IBM punch cards, you begin to question IBM. And don't ever bring that up to IBM. They don't want to hear about it, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. going, going back to Lindbergh, if I may, two quick points. Number yeah. one, the kidnapping took place about two miles from where I'm sitting right now. By the way, really? a German, German guy. Well, maybe, that's maybe, just, maybe. I've read, I, this is one of my all time favorite topics is the Lindbergh kidnapping. Mm -hmm. And I've come to believe that Lindbergh was in on it because his son wasn't Aryan enough. Wow. wow. Really? And there's a lot of literature and a lot of things that point Lindbergh's way. Wow. What yeah. about the cheese? The Lindberger cheese. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's, that's different, different. Limbaugh. That's Limbaugh cheese. That's a Limbaugh cheese. Yeah, Limbaugh oh, cheese. Oh, okay. That's Thanks Rush Limbaugh. The... Which, by the way, another couple of months, and he's going to be cheese, so what the hell? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> How Maybe come I look there. over at this chat, did and Tyson's... Did Tucker Carlson uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. I just president? looked at the chat. Anybody looking at our chat? Tyson's yeah, Acosta is the only guy on there talking to himself. <laughs> he's repeating it over and over the guy yeah he's just talking to himself bruno hauptman bruno hauptman hauptman Coors family yeah yeah Hauptman's he's been drinking he's too much beer questions that we're bringing up <laughs> yeah yeah Lindbergh's yeah, kid was developed 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 developmentally disabled was he he wasn't that old was he no no i thought he was a baby yeah yeah, he baby. was a baby. At the he was an infant, wasn't he? Oh, the Lindbergh baby. Baby, yeah. Baby, yeah. yeah. Um, Robert, how do you know that he was kidnapped from your neighborhood? Well, because it took place in Hopewell Junction, which is two miles from here. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's where the Lindbergh home was. Oh, now, yeah. now okay. the question is, who hmm. was the head of the uh, state police at the time? Schwarzkopf. That's right, Schwarzkopf's father. Schwarzkopf? That's right. Schwarzkopf's yeah. father. Norman oh my Schwarzkopf's gosh. father. Yeah. Storm and Norman. Norman. Yeah. Yeah. Where was uh J. Edgar Hoover? Wasn't he in on it? Or? No. 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 Nope. No, Before but Schwarzkopf's father was one of the people who railroaded Hauptman into the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there is question as to whether Hauptman was the guy. Oh, he didn't do it. it. You know. Really, if you get into reading about the case, you'll be it'll get under your skin. It'll be Yeah. You they tried to go back like though. They tried to go back in retrospect and try and look at the case again and see if Hauptman is innocent and they have yet to be able to prove him innocent though. That's the problem. He's dead, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter so far as history is concerned. I think history should never be allowed to be put to rest. If there's a question about, I'll something. agree. History is important. Yeah, and and, and in mm -hmm. this particular case, I mean, it would be nice to know what really went on there. At, and, at most, I think Hauptman was in on an extortion plot to try to capitalize on the kidnapping, but I don't think he was involved. Yeah, didn't didn't actually no. kidnap him. Uh, where did they find the baby? Do you remember? On the highway, actually, not far, about ten miles from the home. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing was, another oddity, if you like conspiracy stories, mm -hmm. the, the infant that was found was a solid foot longer than the Lindbergh baby should have been. Wow. It was charred beyond recognition, and they just simply said, this must be the kid, and that was that. And you got to mm -hmm. remember, there was a lot of anti-German sentiment at that time. So the fact that they could try to pin it on a German immigrant was, you know, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. How many here listening to us know who Lindbergh was? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Personally, no. Yeah, a no. friend of mine. Yeah, somebody with a big balloon. Yeah, I mean, if you talk to kids today and I said Lindbergh, I don't think they'd know who I was talking about, you know. Um, what, did, what, did, what did Lindbergh have to do? I don't know this with San Diego because 
San Diego's airport is called Lindbergh Field. Well, I mean, he was he was a he was a aeronautic hero. A hero, that's all. Yeah, and First and so they were naming flag. stuff after him all over the place. That's all right. They'll change the name of that pretty soon, anyway. Y yeah, you, you would hope so. Yeah. Oh well. Trump, Trump well, Airport? No. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we do we still we we still have do we have where's John Wayne Airport or did they change the name of that? Orange County. Did they change the name of it back? I don't think so. Didn't somebody want to change the name of that back to something? You know. Um, and we've got the uh, uh, George Bush Airport in Houston, right? Am I right about that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're going to change the San Francisco Airport to Harvey Milk Airport, I think. Really? What, what, is, what is it now? Just San Francisco General. Oh, okay. So yeah. name it after somebody. Harvey yeah, Milk's fine. Which one? Which one, John? San Francisco International. I thought that, I thought that was Zuckerberg now. No, that's you the hospital. The hospital. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, there's a Zuckerberg yeah. Hospital, right? What is yeah. what is General national? Hospital. Isn't that Reagan? Yeah, national yeah. in Washington, Washington D.C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Reagan. Mm -hmm. There's Dulles and Reagan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, you know, I, at, at uh, so Zuckerberg uh, has it has had did how did he get his name on that hospital? Did he buy the naming rights? Paid a bunch of money. Yeah. Money. Money. Yeah. It was like $150 million dollars billion dollars hospital. Outrageous amount of money. Yeah, because people are all wife, pissed off about it too. His wife works there. His wife's a pediatrician or something. Chan, Asian lady. Yeah. yeah. Well, if he put some kind of money into the hospital, I guess you know why not? You know, if he's yeah, helping the well, hospital, it's pretty. It was pretty bad dump. I used to go there all the time. It was a dump. I used, he, live, he, I used to live right across, right down the street from there, in uh, Petrero Hill. Yeah, it was a yes. nice little apartment. It's but right it's on the hospital. Ray Renati, Ray Renati's been really quiet tonight, just showing his pictures of hamsters. That's all. Well, they're gerbils. You were talking about gerbils, so right. I, I thought gerbils, I would just gerbils. Well, yes. Gerbils. Wait, wait, when were we talking about gerbils? <laughs> that was gerbils. That oh, was gerbils. gerbils. Yeah. I was confused. Gerbils. <laughs> that, that'll be gerbils. Minutes. Gerbils yeah, were that, not that responsible for the gerbils were not responsible for the Holocaust. That's right. You know, I'm I sorry. thought you said they were. No, no, <laughs> no. No way. Oh. I went to Bellerman. Come on. What? I went to Bellerman. I know. Oh those God. Things. Bellerman Bells. <laughs> yes, uh, Charlie. I almost went to Sarah. <laughs> oh geez. I float the test on Wait, purpose. Charlie? Adolf Hitler tried a coup and failed. It, Adolf Hitler tried a coup in 1924 and failed. And yep. Germany was very lenient with him. Yeah, he went to jail. what happened later. He went to jail. And, and while in <laughs> but we jail. Can't be lenient with Trump. And he wrote a terrible book. A terrible book called Mein Kampf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the book that uh, Trump was going after. Yeah. That's the only book he ever read, probably. Right. Well, no, it was a book he plagiarized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Let's lay off Trump. Let's just yeah, yeah. let him lie. It's not, Jeez, I'm so sick. Aren't you sick of hearing about him, Robert? Um, uh, no. I mean, in the sense that I want to see him get his just desserts, no. I'll never be Oh, I'll you'd like to see him twist. I think we'd all like to see him twist in the wind. You know? Yeah. yeah. No question about that. Orange jumpsuit. I would. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And Jeff's a nice guy. He doesn't like to get even at all with anybody except Donald Trump, right, Jeff? Trump is uh, a good antidote <laughs> to get rid of somebody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think you see. Uh, here's what I think. I think his penalty should be that he has to ride for a uh, 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 coach uh, everywhere, <laughs> so that no he, ha he has to put up with people in the seat next to him going, "Oh, aren't you Donald Trump?" And then just oh, lay man. into them constantly. How about, the, how about the, he said the Mexicans were going to build the wall. They could build the wall around the prison he's in. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. That's correct. Yes. You know, I, uh, I quite frankly, I, I'm, I'm betting that he doesn't live that long. I think without power, hmm. it's going to just. He's still <clears> got <throat> power. Huh? He still has power, unfortunately. He has money. Not the power he had. What kind of money? He doesn't have a penny. 
Money's no, not power. We don't know that. Uh, well, except that he, people keep sending him money. That's right. He raised over two hundred million dollars on mm. that. Yep. He's the biggest. Stuff. He's the biggest welfare case in America. Yeah. You know, people keep sending him money and taking care of him money wise and so on. And never has to pay for it. He's you the know. most popular law lawyer in the world. Yeah. Very popular liar. What happened to Ray? He disappeared. I think he's been eaten. You, by yes. the gerbils. By the giant gerbils. Going to put his I gerbils his, on the barbecue. His, his lawyers are going to ask for uh, to, to dismiss the trial based on the fact that they're not going to get paid by him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> right. I wonder if he, they work the deal with him. Yeah. <laughs> How much are we going to get paid, Mr. Trump? Well, right. if he if well, he's, he's not gonna pay if, those if he's guys. if he's not going to pay these lawyers, they're getting paid exactly what they're worth. Yeah, exactly. Because these are the worst lawyers I've ever seen. And I said this last night to Phil, and he didn't know it. I said that uh, I said these lawyers were terrible. And he says, "No, they weren't." I said, "Well, Trump thinks so," and he yeah. wasn't aware that Trump had come out and said these guys are doing a terrible job defending yeah. me. Even and like I said, I was with I was listening to Laura, Laura, what's her name? That Laura, what's her name on uh, Fox? Just before I come home tonight, yeah. And she was girl and shown, uh, David shown on the on the on the uh, uh, on an interview, and he was just fumbling left and right, and she was just tearing into him. It was hilarious. Uh, now shown is what he's one of Trump's lawyers, right? Yeah, he's the yeah. he's the little short guy that likes to tap his head when he drinks. Yeah. Oh water. yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Right. You know, that, that's a Jewish religious he thing. Drank. Oh, he's blessing himself. It's a no, he's supposed to have a ha hamaka when he drinks. A hamaka? Well, that's what I thought. I thought maybe his hamaka was falling I off. I played a hamaka. Boy, you are the, yeah. you are the <laughs> ultimate Gentile, John. A hamaka? <laughs> yamaka, I said, man. Yamaka. Yeah. Yamaka. Yenter um, it up. Uh, uh, yeah. However, you're real Gentile. You call it a yamolka. Yamolka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, she was trying to. She was trying Jamoka to get out again what cream. kind of videos Jamoka. and what kind of crap they were going to come up with tomorrow. And he's going, "Well, I don't. I, you just have to see what we got coming up." And she's going, "Well, you know, you should be telling us what it is." Well, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to break that loose tonight. You know. And I think what they're like, going to do is well, they're going to show some nutty squirrel <laughs> com, uh, cartoons. Yeah. Is what they're going to do. Yeah, and verbals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it. it uh, you know, it, it is just. If, if these people would just not make their minds up and listen to the evidence and vote on the evidence, they'd find him guilty. But they're not going to do that. Yeah. They've made up their minds already. We're going to... Well, and that's what's, what's bad is we can't see what they're doing. And I know that during that first day, there was reports of these guys sitting there reading papers. Well, they, had pictures of, of, uh, no, they, had pic they had pictures of Rand Paul just making doodles on a piece doodles, of paper yeah. and mean, and and ted cruz was like i don't know reading a newspaper or something yeah, they weren't it's they were ridiculous watching I mean, how the can videos. You do that? today holy was sitting in the balcony with his feet on the chair in front of him really i mean that needs wow. that just requires a smack it it's does real. well i mean yeah, have I mean, a little respect for the pro have, 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 have a respect for the fucking house anyway have a respect yeah, for the exactly. process for the process yeah. And and listen to what's going on, and then make a considered uh, decision based on what you heard. So is that is that a rule that uh, the Democrats agreed to with the with the Republicans? That's a bunch of bullshit. That's another one of the the Democrats' rules that I think was stupid. Yeah, you know, which, which was why do they let them do that? Bring the cameras in and show everybody. Mm. If you want to, you want you want to come through it. Open it up. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't think, understand uh, sometimes what the Democrats are doing. It's it just the, the, reason, the reason there's no cameras in there is because uh, C-SPAN is, is they're using C-SPAN's uh, cameras. Yeah, I know, and, and that's well, that's two GoPros. That's what they are. C-SPAN's yeah. cameras. Uh, hey, yeah. listen, uh, there's our little theme. Not a little theme. It's a big theme, actually. <laughs> Uh, but I got my money's worth out of it, so you know. Oh yeah. God, my back is killing. It's going to be hell when I get up out of this it. chair after being stuck in it for Take two hours. Take another Vicodin, you'll be fine. I'm certainly going to. I don't. I do have Vicodin. Why don't I take that? I have some bike in the house. Better living through narcotics is what That's I That's right. Anyway, listen, we got to go. Uh, thank you very much, Brian, for being here tonight. Robert, thanks for the uh, minutes. 
Uh, thank you, uh, 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 Alan, for joining us tonight. Very nice job. A nice job, Charlie. Good job, Jeff. Uh, Kevin, that car is cool. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, John Larkin, thank you. And wherever Ray Renati went, he just left us with his goddamn gerbils, and that's it. <laughs> anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and we'll give a big <laughs> wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the uh, Citizen Panel for tonight. Uh, another one we'll be getting together just moments from now. Uh, with uh, Jack Bishop. He's going to be here with The Intersection. He's going to be taking your calls on Skype. Uh, the address for on Skype to call him is GabNet Live. All one word, GabNet Live. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're getting out of here. We'll be back again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And be safe out there. Wear a mask. Night! <laughs>